So this quick video is on the condenser, the component of the basic refrigerant circuit, component of typical air conditioning equipment that you probably have in your home or office. They, they generally are all going to have a condenser. If you look on the back of an old refrigerator, you had that, that coil that ran up and down the back. That was a condenser. And a condenser's job is a heat rejector. It rejects heat from the system. Evaporator coil absorbs the heat. Compressor is the pressure increaser. Metering device is the pressure dropper. And the condenser's job is to reject the heat that was absorbed in that evaporator coil. So that's what it does. But how does it do it? Well, three things actually happen inside of the condenser. There is the desuperheating phase. There is the condensing phase, the change from vapor to liquid. And then there is the subcooling phase. And so we'll, we'll talk about this briefly. The desuperheating phase is taking that refrigerant that came out of that compressor down to the condensing temperature or the saturation temperature of the refrigerant. And all that is is it's just the temperature at the given pressure at which there is a mixed state between liquid and vapor. If you don't know what... Saturation is, it's a word that a lot of technicians, you know, kind of misinterpret. You can look that up on the HVAC school website. They have all sorts of articles on saturation and podcasts on saturation. It's the point at which the refrigerant starts to change state. And so we're going to change from vapor to liquid in the condenser. First, it desuperheats, then it changes state. So their big center portion of that condenser is changing the state from vapor to liquid. And then at the end, it subcools, which means it drops temperature below the condensing temperature or below saturation. So those are the three things that happen inside that condenser, but how do they do it? Well, the condenser has to reject heat. That's its job. It's the heat rejector. So it has to reject heat to something. And in this case, it's generally air and your typical air conditioner at your house, a split system package unit, window unit, whatever. It's generally the air, um, but it can also be water. It could be glycol. It could be a lot of different substances. It could be another refrigerant that's used. Um, but the goal is to get that heat out of that refrigerant and to something else. Now, that something else that is rejecting its heat to, by its very nature, has to be a lower temperature. As an example, we'll use a typical residential split system. So let's say you have have a, I don't know, a condensing temperature of 110 degrees, we'll say, and you have an outdoor temperature of 90 degrees, you'll notice there's a 20 degree difference. That outdoor temperature has to be lower than that condensing temperature in order for heat to come out of the refrigerant in the condenser and to be rejected into the air. First rule, hot goes to cold, right? You have to reject heat from the condenser to something that is a lower temperature than the condenser. So when you look at that condensing temperature, and we do that by looking at a gauge and it tells us what that condensing temperature is, by its very nature, it must be higher than the medium that we are rejecting to. So whereas air is not the best thing to, to reject heat to, water is better. So there's differentials might vary, but regardless, no matter what we're rejecting to, the temperature rejecting to must be lower than the the temperature of the refrigerant in the condenser. That's uh, the, that condensing temperature. It's also useful to know that most condensers are piped, especially you know the air-cooled types that we work on generally. They're piped so that way the refrigerant starts in the top. So it comes out of the discharge line from the compressor, goes into the top of the condenser, and then works its way down until it becomes fully liquid at the bottom or subcooled. Again, subcooled is temperature below that condensing temperature. So that's mostly it. Condensers can be can reject heat to a lot of different types of mediums, but they are all heat rejectors, and they go through the three phases they all have to. The desuperheating phase that brings it to the condensing temperature, which is that first little bit in the top, and then you have that condensing phase, which is through the bulk of the condenser, and then at the end, that's when you have the subcooling phase, which is the drop below the saturation temperature. You can only have subcool once the refrigerant is fully liquid. You can only have superheat if it is fully vapor, and that condensing temperature segment is all there in the middle. So it's like it's like watching a boiling pot of water, but in reverse. It's changing from uh, liquid to vapor instead of vapor to liquid. That's your condenser, the heat rejector. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.